what's your back line been doing well, especially you know as things are kind of changing and as you guys deal with injuries and rotations? Well, <clears throat> I mean, the back lines put the work in. Defending's hard work sometimes. Uh, they're understanding our tactics, when to press, why we're pressing, you know, who they're pressing against. Uh, so overall, I think it's just good team defending. How well has Jackson been playing recently, especially for a young guy like himself? How long? How well. Sorry. How well? Or has he been playing well? <laughs> Is that a trick question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, Steve? Maybe he needs some coaching too. Um, now Jackson's played very well. I would say very well. If I want my serious answer, he's played very well. Um, he was a bit of a surprise because, you know, when he got released from Chicago, he came back here. Wade Weber did a great job with him. You know, I think Defiance was good for him. He found his footing, you know, and then in preseason, he just like skyrocketed. I mean, his decision making, his technical ability under pressure is obviously very good. And then he's been working on his defending. Look, he's, he's a giant, he's six foot five, but he can get better in the air. We'll challenge him on some, you know, attacking pieces to be like Chad Marshall. Um, defensively, reading forwards, getting the experience that he needs at the top level here in the United States, uh, playing against different types of forwards. Those are the things where he can always improve, but he's done really well. This Montreal team has a lot of quality in central midfield. They are quick in transition. Uh, how do you prepare to kind of contain those elements of their game? Well, keep possession is one. This will be their third game in eight days. And active defending is something that we always, always talk about. That means when we have possession of the ball, we're actively defending against any transition moments. Going over a couple of health things, how is the role doing right now? Good. He wants to talk to me afterwards about playing faster. We got to keep him, you know, tranquilo. Uh, but he's doing good. Javi's doing good. They're working hard. Okay. Uh, that has been a little bit since we got the update and the news on Obed Vargas. Uh, is there any specific timeline that you can possibly look at, or, or is it kind of just taking it step by step? No, we actually let him go home to Alaska a little bit to kind of decompress mentally, spend a few days with his family. He's got his bone stimulator, his portable bone stimulator and all the stuff that they're doing for him. But we gave him a little bit of time off. I think that's good for him. And then he'll come back and you know, I don't know when the next scan, what phase, you know, what date they have the next scan scheduled, but they will. Speaking of Obed, is there anything that you look back on and, and feel like was missed or that you, you guys should have you could have done differently or do you feel pretty confident in, that was, in the way that progressed? That was the exercise that we did. We don't have an answer for that question, but that's the same question we asked our doctors, the medical staff, coaching staff, we asked all those questions. I don't think it was anything real dramatic or anything yet. Yeah, that's the moment where he injured himself. But there was, you know, different theories that we talked about just so we can learn. And just to clarify, you had mentioned that he had felt some uh, discomfort or whatever a, a couple months ago. Was that yeah. like was that something that came and went pretty quickly, or how like how would you maybe if you could just kind of detail what well, it, that it, was? Again, sometimes with young players, they don't know exactly the extent of their injuries. He had a sore back, but he's a tough kid, so it lasted a week. You know, it had hot packs, everything played through it. It got better. They gave him some, you know, whatever pain medication, it got better. And he played a bunch of games, CCL, all of that, and then it flared up again. And when it flared up this time, then it was a little more urgent that we really take a good look at it. So it wasn't a situation where like every week after a game he was in pain, yeah. it was like he had some discomfort and then it went away. Yeah. Uh, when, when it comes to rotating uh, players, how much difference does it make when you are in an extended homestand? Like, is it easier to not have to rotate when you're in this, or is it? I mean, I never looked at it home or away. We rotate players for different reasons. Um, home or away, I like to play the same. I mean, we might change tactics. We might 
have some subtle changes in the way we look at things, but you know, every game is a game we want to win. You know, so next game's most important, and you look a little bit ahead. You kind of make decisions based on your week in a three-game week, but rotations are always the same. You went one-one, LAFC. You scored three against uh, Sporting. Sporting. Thank you. And so uh, your Vancouver was. <laughs> Four. You know, actually, I got oh, you. Okay. I, thank right. you for Four. that. No, Brian, I was actually going to six, seven, okay. ten. Actually, ten. You scored ten goals in the last four games. What is it that's going on with your offense? I mean, we're taking advantage of the chances we create. We've got a talented squad. I think we've got a balanced squad. I mean, would it be nice to have a twenty-eight? A year goal score, maybe, but sometimes having balanced in there, you know, Raul's got a bunch, you know, Will's got off the board, Nico always scores, Christian chips in, Jordan pitches in. I mean, we've got a lot of goal scores on this team, if you actually look at it. Albert, I mean, look, Albert had the one against LAFC, but he's going to score more this year. One of those components in this collective scoring that this team has has been Jordan Morris. He, he just looks like he's got in a real groove. Have you seen anything different about the way he's approaching the game or seeing the field at all? I think they're all, <clears throat> look, they're all motivated to play for this club. Jordan wants to win. Uh, you know, the culture of this club is built off being competitive. He fits that mold. You know, the national team is a carrot the end of a stick. There's lots of reasons why he's always dangerous and always effective and always trying to score goals. To piggyback off of that, last four goals for him have all been from the head. Is that something that he's specifically been working on? Not specifically, but we have made that a couple of year process with him because he's a big kid. He jumps well. So we've been talking about that for quite some time. And I think he's slowly over the years <coughs> worked on it, worked on it in different moments. And there's a reward. To, to, to kind of go off of that as well, you guys are really put together uh, like a concept of those early crosses, and you got really good service players there. Is that something that you guys emphasize a little bit on, some of those early crosses into the box? Yeah. I mean, early balls are always good if the defenders are running back toward their own goal. But we also like to attack the prime assist zone. We also have guys who can shoot from distance. I mean, those players make good decisions on the field based on what they see, where the movement is, what your opponent is doing. We're going to play against three center backs with Montreal. Maybe from way back here, early ball on the floor behind them is a better tactic than trying to float a ball into the penalty box when you have three big center backs marking your center forward. And I wanted to ask you kind of a off the field question, kind of, uh, with a lot of your assistants taking on, on other teams and you kind of, may, I don't know if you feel like a mentor, but how much have you looked into, you know, what's going on with Gonzalo at Atlanta and all the injuries he's kind of suffered and how uh, maybe Esra struggled a little bit? Do you kind of look at him, talk to him at all? Well, I try and keep in contact with them. Uh, obviously, I have my job to do. Obviously, I'm very proud of the fact that they've had some involvement in this club and then gone on to become head coaches. You know, the mentor word is maybe a little strong for, for me, but I certainly tried to help. But they're pretty smart guys on their own. Jimmy's doing well. So the guys that leave, you know, I'm always rooting for them.